So let's now do a little bit of magic, right? So again, I got the geo-referenced uh, US Army map here, which contains Nagala. Right, so again, as you can see, it's um, I cannot zoom in too much here because the scale is, is not that good. Right, you can see some of the places uh, to which we pause, I guess, when we reach the base of the hill. Some places again are too small. Here is the uh, eastern entry. Places like Tipikota, like small villages, might not have existed one century ago. Otherwise, they would have definitely been here. The current map, or we have the trail captured map the old uh, it get oh it will get matched that's not a problem so let's let's do a test here yeah. so for example now i'm gonna take an uh, a google map and put this on top of this uh, so let's go back to terra and let's take my first topo map of google so obviously when i put this on top bang it's gonna disappear okay. but uh, that's where the nice thing comes in i can now use some transparency I can first of all get rid of this section and I can make this a bit transparent instead of opaque, I can say, make it 50% apply. So now you can see it's very interesting. I kind of start seeing both uh, the maps. I think I need to give a little bit more to Google so we can see the topo lines apply. Right. And now you actually should be able to see the match. Should be able to see where the uh, kind of Russians draw the stream here. You can see the the cut in the Google Maps. You can see the I mean, you can see basically the edges are matching, right? Even on top of this again, I can load that same GPS GPX file that I created. My first map, my second my my second map, I guess. Sorry. Yeah, this again I can put on top. See, and I got a perfect match. I can even show you on both the maps, so if I hide this map here, see exactly that western entry matches perfectly with where the Russians at, so I mean plus minus where the Russians put a blue line. Uh, so I can zoom in maybe a little bit more. You can see there is a side stream here then. Here I indicate place mark was probably the, we the western peak, uh, around the peak you can see it's all topo lines down and then these ridges but again as you can see i think this is a perfect illustration that those uh soviets and u.s army maps are pretty high scale i mean one centimeter being two kilometers is pretty high for tracking it's not very useful to be honest uh just more useful to kind of take a look afterwards how you progressed over this did you miss out any and did you come too close to some jeep trail or something uh, or on a bike trip or road trip, I think it makes more sense where you can cover longer distance in time. Okay, so this is how you kind of play around, right? Once you have GP GPX files with trails and points, once you have KMZ files with reference uh, pictures, picture maps, you can start playing around in any order. So it's very flexible. Also, GPSs will load those files. Can they recommend tools that uh, I'm not too familiar with Android again because battery will go too fast and it's too tricky to take a 20k phone <laughs> on a rough track. So mostly I use rugged uh, GPS units. Okay, now one more interesting thing. Let's take a look at this Google Earth. Google Earth has one additional feature that some of you might be aware of in the fact that you can start tilting the angle here instead of looking at your terrain from a 90 degree top viewpoint. You can now kind of get like an, I mean, not a perfect, but a kind of an interpolated 3D view. So let me first hide uh, this map. Sorry. So if you see here, you can kind of start recognizing now in three dimensional the valleys, the peaks, and everything we drew. Right? You can clearly identify, you see almost in three dimensional sealed in Nagala. Western peak. This would be better. The Nagala Western Peak, right? You can see the top of, of this peak, right? It's very kind of nicely done. They have overlaid this two-dimensional photograph on a 3D wireframe. Nice thing is I can start looking at this from all the angles, right? I can see, look at the entire peak. I told you you got a 270-degree view from this uh, peak, which is true. All around you will have an awesome drop. Yeah, I can reach the peak two ways. I can go through the valley here, the valley which is very clear now. I can go through this valley till here. Here I can get into a side stream which has cut through this place. 
fly them a little up here. You can see there is vegetation along the south si side stream. And then eventually from, from the side stream, I can try to climb up, connect to the ridge, walk on the ridge and reach this point. You can also clearly see these are ridges. I'm walking on top of the hill, ridges left and right. I'm seeing having a nice view below me. Here I'm reaching a saddle. After the saddle, I'm climbing up again. It's actually a better way for me to illustrate. From this peak again, I'm walking ridges, ridges, ridges. Coming probably on a bit of a saddle here, climbing up again. Here again, saddle, climb up again. Walk again to a lower saddle, climb up again. And here you can see, right, this is almost like a bowl. A bowl, any water that comes here, has to go down in the stream and exit through the stream. And this is a why why is there water now it hasn't rained simply because the raindrops which fell here trickle 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 one kilometer of dense vegetation trees there they might be sucked up by trees they might be lucky to escape go through tens of thousands of small and crevices in the rock so it obviously takes weeks sometimes for the water near the ridges to come to the stream and then trickle down here so that's in the beautiful drainage system which keeps us happy <laughs> throughout the year Right, and you can also see near the tops, near the ridges, near the peaks, that it's less vegetation. Why? Because there is less water there. Any water there will quickly drip down. You got much more water down the valleys where all the water gets collected. So the vegetation will be much more denser there. I can again adopt here, right? So this is this pretty nice tool to kind of, here you can clearly see that saddle, that lower portion between the two peaks. Here again, that saddle and that almost horizontal walk. Here uh, again, a nice, a bit of a steeper ridge to climb down. But it will be easy to walk because you're kind of walking flat, grassland open, not much bush. And you don't want to walk like five meters to the left, five meters to the right because it's, you're going to walk on this edge, right? You want to walk on top of the ridge or in the valley where it's flat. So you already have enough stress on your feet. Okay, so this is a good point for the next workshop. I can probably use a 3D model to kind of clearly illustrate these key points. Okay, so and then again, here in Google Earth, you can play around. You can put a topo map on top of it, and you can uh, go to the properties and start toggling the uh, transparency. Sorry, this is the one. Is the one yeah okay i probably have to go to the slice and start toggling the transparency of the slice yeah well here we are see real time you can see it's almost nicely matching right you can see if i put one peak here somewhere in, in the visibility like let's keep this uh, this guy peak and just uh, let me look at it from the southern side well you can clearly see the peak. i can tilt the angle a little bit better right you can see this peak right now let's see how the topo lines are drawn. Very also nice to see those contour lines nicely appearing. See, beautifully, you can see how they generate a contour map from this map. And so from a picture, obviously not from a picture, but from some kind of sensing technique, radar technique, they will be beaming to the earth and whatever comes back quick as a peak, whatever takes more time will be deeper, will be a valley. So here again, you can clearly see the lines Right, and uh, here a little bit steep, uh, not that easy to see here, right, because you're just looking at the picture, it's not always clear. Same thing here, you got a valley, so valley we expect will be a U-shape kind of topography. So as you can see, you can clearly see the valley here. So this would also kind of be easy to climb up on the stream into the, on top of the hill. Or you could simply walk on the ridge line again, ridge line, which you can clearly see here. And walking over. Left, right, you'll have awesome views on a ridge. You're walking on top of the ridge with uh, nice views and steep edges on both sides. Typically, on the length of the ridge, it will be less steep. Left and right of the ridge, you don't want to walk because it's going to be steep. And once you go a little below the ridge or below the peaks, more water comes there. So it's going to become very dense, very bushy, very thorny, and very bloody. Cool. So I think this was a nice wireframe actually. Happy that we were able to combine all these pieces together. Okay, and never done, but I guess what should also be possible is to import. Uh, not sure if this guy supports the Aussie Explorer map format. Otherwise, we can import these. Uh, 
No, I guess, yeah. It has to be a KMZ format, not an OZ format, to import uh, the uh, Russian or US Army maps. Okay, so this is Google Earth, a nice tool, eh, to, especially after the trail. Again, let me show you a uh, walked on trail on this. So let me take, say, Nagala 44. Uh, just too nicely to see how we kind of climbed all around, how we got stuck. I've never done, but I ex I s would assume that a GPX file should be supported. That would be too too much of an uh, impossibility. GPX mm, almost there. GPX Nyla 44. Okay, I think it's able to import it. Yeah, there it is. So let me hide my own plan map. Oh shit, this is a nice one. Let me hide this one. Voila. See, this is how our two day. This is actually uh, in December 2009 when we first uh, discovered the Western Entry Valley. So here you can nicely see how we walked over this terrain. So very, like here was our first campsite. People who have gone up the stream beyond the social tracks, beyond the third pool, you'll come to a nice canal pool. Uh, not really visible here, right? But it is there. Then here uh, we had a left stream. Here we filled up the water bottles. Here we could have gone further along the stream, but we said, okay, let's start climbing up because we need a saddle here. You see, the two between peaks. It's easy to climb to a saddle. Saddle is very low, so you can climb up there. Topal lines are not too close. So we went to the peak, enjoyed the view. We climbed here down on uh, uh, a stream, as you can see. There's a bit of a stream. Here we got stuck. This uh, side stream here trickling down to the mainstream, not possible, was a vertical drop. Not big, 10 meters, but 10 meters is enough. So we had to climb around actually through this uh, gradient, bushes typically thorny, and then reach the bottom of the stream. Then again, we started walking again. Uh, you can nicely see, right, how we're walking through a realistic GPS log. Here again, what you don't see is that there's a 15 meter drop here where we had to jump down. And then basically this is how we then came uh, towards the base of the hill. Right, you can again look at this at any map. You can hide. You can see this in uh, on a photographic view. And here there seems to be a kind of a drop here where we got stuck. So here I put a marker with the GPS. We kind of followed the dry stream. Then we had to drop and then we went there. It's not precisely shown here. It's as I told, GPS will not put points all the time. The log will quickly get full. It will put points like every 200 meters or every two minutes. Oh. I don't know, this was marked in the field. So in the field, you can click on a button in the GPS to kind of identify a drop, a waterfall, a campsite, a saddle, a peak, anything that is useful to anybody else who might want to load the same GPX file line in there. GPS and they can then easily follow the trail, right? It's going to be very simple because what you need to do is your black triangle. You just need to follow it and make sure it stays on the line. If you go to the left, go to the right, that means you're diverging from the uh, already done trail. So that's basically, I mean, like then you can, a child can do this actually. You just need a GPS and an existing trail. Only like an exploration track makes it more fun because you, you don't know what's ahead of you. Okay, so I think it's 1.30. I think I, uh, let me take a quick look. We should have covered most of the topics. It was not...